airport. Oh, great. Yeah. I think I know about the yeah. area you're in. Yeah, I've been down there for business a few times. Uh, I'm retired military, civil service work still for the government now. So, you know, oh, where cool. the headquarters Southbound Complex is yeah. uh, up in, oh, uh, Lord, I can't remember the name of the area now. It's been so long. <laughs> it starts with a D. I get it. Uh, Dayland or? I don't know. I, I went, I went, I've gone brain dead on so much stuff since COVID. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I've yeah. brain dead <laughs> enough already. Before it got here. Start with, yeah. right? <laughs> you land yep. and all that kind of fun stuff. Not Daytona. All right. Welcome to You're Let's out. Talk Racing. We're up and running. Oh. Hey, good evening, everybody. You go in here on Facebook you're live and you set up this thing. It says, okay, let's schedule this. So we schedule it. Then when it comes to it, it says, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back and manually do it all over again. What the heck? Um, that's uh, last week's. I'm trying to find this week's. We got Patrick Starpoli. How you doing? What's up, guys? Thank you for having me on tonight. Oh, uh, it's 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 a, a nice to see you again. I mean, last time I saw you was what back at Martinsville. We went to the uh, the 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 sirloin place or something like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite restaurant over there. Oh we went God, the yes. Wow. I think we spent, what, about three or four hours sitting in there? <laughs> I don't know. We were, we were bench racing in there for a while. That was fun. <laughs> uh, Patrick was running, uh, let's see, you're running K&N. And did, did you get uh, a little bit of, uh, did you get a little bit of Xfinity racing in too or not? Uh, it was uh, one truck series race. One and then truck? the K&N races, like you mentioned. Yeah. I remember the pink on the car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Auto Nation uh, drive pink car back then. It was, uh, you know, raising breast cancer. They just won the Indy 500 with uh, Helio this past week. So, yeah, yeah that was pretty that. Cool. Uh, that was the same campaign there. Yeah, he, he's a pretty cool guy. I've talked to him back a few years back at Richmond. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for my those. kids were watching that when we left him, we visited him when we left where the race was over. And then I, my wife called and said, you want me to tell you who won? You want to, I said, no, go ahead. I said, Helio. I said, apparently the real, I said, yeah, people were, he said, people were screaming in the stands. I said, I bet. Mm -hmm. He was a real popular guy. So, a really nice guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, he he uh, did a little small video for Faith when she was still kicking. That dropped off to her after that race. That's how. That's when I found out how bad Danica Patrick was to talk to. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So Patrick, I know uh, this is your first time back with us on video now instead of on the phone. Yeah. Do I take right, you right, and, uh, Give everybody a short rundown on uh, about yourself. Your little racing resume. Uh, well, try to keep it as short as possible. I mean, I started racing uh, go karts when I was 13 years old. I'm, I'm 31 now, so I had a little bit of a later start than most. I uh, grew up down here in South Florida, racing at Hialeah Speedway, uh, which is now you know closed down, but it's a pretty well-known short track, uh, at least back in the day. Lots of guys came up racing here, so that's, that's kind of where I cut my teeth, and then uh, raced, you know, the Florida Pro Truck Series, and then Super Late Models around Florida. Ended up winning the uh, the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge that was put on by Mike Walshup Racing back in 2013. Uh, the grand prize was one K&N Series race uh, out west. Went out there, finished fifth in, in my first start, and at the same time I was doing that, I was also in, in medical school. I had just finished my first year of uh, medicine, and uh, took the year off, went racing, uh, not full time. We had like a, a partial, like quarter season schedule, but I knew that was like a, a golden opportunity. I didn't want to miss that, so uh, did some races. Uh, won one of them out at Irwindale, uh, which was which was huge. I think that was their fourth or fifth start. Uh, interned with the team for a little while as a, as a marketing guy, did some research for medicine at the same time so they wouldn't kick <laughs> me out of school, and uh, went back, finished up with that. And uh, now I still you know, race super late models around Florida, uh, finished up my residency training, and, and ra winning races, talking to you guys, living the life. Man. Wow, I tell you, he, he, I, I think when he, it's going to be really slick. He's going to develop the surgical tool while he's racing <laughs> You know, like James Bond type stuff. It's going to go out there and poke a tire on the guy next to him. You know, <laughs> that's top secret. We're not talking about that. <laughs> we won't tell anybody. So, are you MD then? 
Yeah, yeah, MD now, and uh, so I, I'm specializing in ophthalmology. So it's you know all kinds of, of eye surgery, basically, <laughs> and that's a four year program. Yeah, I actually yeah. finish up with it this month. Well, Good for you. I, I've been an optician since 1976. So. Oh, really? We, I fill your prescriptions, basically. <laughs> People say, what the heck? I said, <laughs> ophthalmology, optometry, I think you fix them when I, when I write them wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, we've got one ophthalmologist, I'm not going to name it. Uh, you're, we kind of hate to see those prescriptions. Uh, but yeah, I said, well, I'm, what are you then? I said, I'm like the pharmacist. So they in, that was where a white coat is working. I said, no, I'm just an old guy in a white coat. I'm not a doctor. And some people insist on calling me doc, but that's okay, you know. I've been called a lot worse. So. <laughs> but, yeah, well, you, you guys make all the magic happen. I mean, we, we do everything in the clinic and stuff, but really, yeah. for a lot of people, the biggest thing is getting them the right pair of glasses at the end of the day. So, yeah. you know, we rely on, on the opticians also. Yeah, yep. it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, particularly when you get a young kid, it's very rewarding for us. And a lot of times, even mm -hmm. older people that, I said, what have you been doing? Standing on a newspaper to read it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you go, well, no, what do you mean? I said, but dude, you should have had glasses two or three years ago. Well, I didn't mean it. Yep. Yes, you did. The prescription says yes, you did. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so you probably yeah, that's that. that makes a difference for the rest of the life too. Catch it in a kid, so yeah, absolutely. It, it's um, you know, you know <laughs> it's rewarding for my end. I'm sure it is very even more so for mm -hmm. your end. So yep, definitely. Yep. You have to bear with me being a little quiet. I'm trying to find. Ah, uh, oh, there it is. That's okay. Uh, um, well, at least you got a good you got a good backup plan anyway, don't you? Hey, David, oh, just yeah. go to my oh, uh, Facebook page. It's right there. Got you, brother. The uh, what, Facebook is driving me crazy, Patrick. Yeah. You know, <laughs> every it seems like every other week they change something. It yeah. is always changing. They're doing it just to mess with you, I think. Oh, God, I took it last week. I went to start, and it did 29 seconds, and I went to share something, and all of a sudden, bang, it jumps off because I went to one of the pages where it's a, like a business page type thing because I have all my stuff I do. I've got like 10 pages on Facebook, and if I go to the wrong one, it says, okay, we're signing you in as this, and then everything I was already doing says, Bye bye. Yeah, I shared it to my home page, and I got home. So we look at this, and it goes, and it goes, and it starts doing a loop. But every twenty nine seconds, it was the twenty nine seconds was the first one. And, 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 I, and I text Roger. I said, Roger, because we we got yakking. We were probably on an hour and a half, and then we went out to eat, and that was probably ten o'clock. I got home, my wife was losing her mind. I kept texting her, saying, I'm okay, you know, and. Uh, I said, Roger, it's like 29 seconds. And he said, yeah, I know. I'm trying to fix that now. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, like my computer system we use at work. Hey, oh, we're doing an upgrade. Sure, thanks. Right. I don't appreciate that. You know, so it makes me look dumber and stupider and slower than I already am. So, <laughs> yeah. I got your name in two or three times, but it's an insurance company that says I'm mad at and it's not. Anyway. Whatever they, they don't share with us, why they do stuff sometimes. Yeah, I'm sitting here now. I have to do a share page by page now. Used to be you clicked on one thing, you said, All right, we're going to start it. Where do you want to share it? And you click every all your regular pages, boom, 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 and you start yeah. it up, and it all goes yeah. to them, and everybody yeah. can find it. I'm getting people sending me messages, it's not working tonight, or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So, uh, that's well, like I used to. Well, I've got a Twitter account. And it used to be if I did a tweet, it would share it to Facebook. So that's how I, you know, puts my opinions out there in some of the races and stuff like that. It got some harsh comments back, but that's okay, you know. And uh, then Facebook says, we're not going to allow that anymore. But no fun. And then I got something from Facebook saying, we deleted one of your, one of your posts. And I looked at it. It was a post from eight years ago. It actually was a tweet <laughs> that was shared to Facebook, which they allowed at the time. Eight years ago, they finally got around and said, we don't like this. I said, 
it's not really that bad. Okay, fine. I actually did a screenshot of this. Because <laughs> it was a tweet so long ago. It was eight years. So, you know, the robots get out there. And I, I'm on some racing pages, and uh, I get a, I've get been made a moderator, and I get some alerts. You know, somebody says something, and some guy had 125 uh, alerts from him. I don't know what he was pasting on that page. What he was posting, he was posting a bunch of stuff, and Facebook didn't like any of it. So we had to kick him off. So, <laughs> so. they change something every week. I think that's because they can. <clears throat> Mess with your minds. Yeah. So now you won a race this past weekend, yeah. and I think I noticed the post said you and somebody else. Yeah, we uh, we went up in Auburndale Speedway this past weekend, uh, which was our first win in a little while. Uh, a lot of it probably had to do with not not racing much last year due to COVID and everything. But um, it was an exciting race. You know, we qualified third and uh, basically kept the leaders in sight for the first you know 30, 40 laps and then got up to second with about 10 to go. And on one of the restarts, we had been fighting an issue all weekend where the throttle was actually sticking at the end of the straightaway. It was something with the gas pedal oh. through the foot box. Yeah, never never fun. That's like the scariest thing I feel like that can happen in a car. Um, we thought we had it fixed. It didn't act up at all during the race. And we went down in the corner on the restart. And, of course, that's when it gets stuck. I hit the brakes, went in the corner, hugged the leader real tight on the outside, got off the brake. And all of a sudden, it still sounded like it was that like 3,000, 4,000 RPM. And the car wow. came whoop, right up the track, like into the marbles. I kicked the pedal back, and you know, fortunately, it came back to me. Uh, we dropped back down into fourth, uh, got back up into second. Fortunately, got another. You know, there was another wreck. We had a late race restart, and um, the throttle didn't stick that time. We made the pass on the outside and, and won the race. So it was oh, exciting. Wow. Just that alone, but the, the throttle made it even more dramatic. You know, <laughs> that's uh, I, that kind of thing's been happening a lot to people lately. Uh, yeah. Um, Roger, uh, go ahead, Roger. I know you want to talk about the uh, what happened to Paul. Yeah, Paul Lubno, one of the guys I spot for, uh, spot for him most uh, all the time. Mm. Apparently, during practice, throttle stuck wide open, right up into the wall. Took Jeez. out, took out the front clip, ricocheted off of that rear clip, hit rear end, hit. So all yeah. that stuff's all messed up. Wiped out the whole car. Yeah. Same so thing happened to Jamie. Good. Sam, I was going to say, Jamie Good, yeah. one of our uh, grandson drivers here, what, about two months ago, I guess it was, roughly? Yeah. Um, speeding down the back stretch, got into turn three, and we're almost stuck wide open right into the wall. He yeah. so hard, it broke the fuel line, oil line, don't know which, ricocheted off, caught fire, and uh, lucky, uh, we had uh, you know safety crew down there. Um, we went, work at a local racetrack, Langley Speedway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, they uh, uh, got to it quickly, put the fire out. He was okay. He got out. He was injured. But uh, a lot of incidents are like that. I and mean, it's one of the crazy things, I guess. The only thing is, yeah, ran in about 10 or 12 years. That was his first race is back. That was his first race is back. Yeah. 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 That, was, race, it, that, that was his first race. That was his first race. And now she's going, okay, stupid. <laughs> no, that was, his first, that was his first big race back. Yeah. And will probably be his last race because he had uh, his children watching through the fence almost right where he wrecked at. Yikes. Um, so, yeah, he, 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 I, I, I think I haven't heard from him, but I believe he said that was probably going to be it. If the car got fixed, it would be probably with somebody else behind the wheel. Um, yeah. Uh, one of those things is sometimes you've got to make the call. Now, I'm glad to hear you able to get yours corrected a little bit. Uh, yeah. You have, the, you, have the toe, you have the toe piece on yours? Yeah, we have the toe piece so it could get it kicked back. And, you know, fortunately, it didn't stick wide open. And just like you guys were saying, in those cases, it happens so fast. There's there's nothing. Yeah. You know, you can, everyone's like, oh, I'll hit the kill switch. I'll pop it out of the gear. If it stuck wide open, it absolutely would have been, you know, game game over. And fortunately, it stuck, like, kind of right at the top of the, the pedal pretty much, and, and it kicked back. But um, that's scary, man. It's scary whenever that happens. Well, like you said, it, it's you almost have to have your hand on the kill switch. It, to react fast enough to do that with, because you, your first instinct is, oh crap, we're fixing to meet the wall, uh, right. and you, you don't have time to do a whole lot. You pull back with the toe, and if that don't work, you're about out of luck. And by then you're there. Yeah, yeah. you're full throttle. You're full throttle in most cars. You only got two seconds, three seconds. You know, it's a done deal. Right. Right. Yeah, because it's always at the, at the 
entrance of your turn where you mm -hmm. think you're off the gas and you're going full blast anyway. So yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. That's, that's well, that I've gone as far as I can go before letting off the throttle anyway. So you're past yeah. the point of turn by the time you can figure out something's going wrong. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Glad to hear it worked out for you. Got a yeah, bunch of effective uh, return, return throttle springs up here somewhere or something? I don't know. It's just, I've, we figured I've, out it all. I've had, my, I've had my, I've had that happen to me too. My throttle string, springs broke as I was going down between three and four down at Langley in late model. And uh, the driver outside of me didn't appreciate it too much. <laughs> No. But I was able to lift. I was able to lift the lift with the with the foot pedal, got off right. it. But the just the inertia of me hitting him and shoving him, he slammed on the wall and yeah. tore his poor race car up. That's that's a classic four. tires that for a situation. Yeah, but uh, they tires were good. Let me tell you, for me yeah. at least, not for him. Yeah. There, there. Yeah. After that, there was a rather large fight. No oh, man. <laughs> Uh, but uh, my, I told my guys, I said, somebody go down and tell them what happened, you know, after, even though we fixed the stuff right in front of them because when we pulled in. <laughs> and uh, they never told him. And yeah. then, as soon as I pulled in after the race, all of a sudden somebody's trying to punch me out, both the driver and his dad. And they wound up <laughs> both getting kicked out for a month and getting fined by NASCAR. So, wow. Crazy stuff. But anywho, so uh, tell me a little bit more. Now, or now you're doing your ophthalmology stuff. Um, are you in your own practice or are you part of a group? Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm finishing up residency. So we're in a big, you know, academic hospital is what they call it. Uh, it's down here in Miami it's at Bascom Palmer. So it's this giant, like, six-story yeah. hospital. It's like it is. hundreds of doctors who work there. And it's, it's all, like, different levels of, you know, experience. You know, basically it's it's three years of, of training and then you kind of go out from, from here. Um you know, people can enter practice and go out on their own. And I'm actually going to do a, a fellowship to specialize in, in retina surgery. So that's what I'm going to do for the next two years. It's still, it's more training. It's not official job yeah. yet. Thank you. Um, but yeah, getting close to the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. It, it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird to compare, you know, eye surgery to, to race car driving. But I think a lot of the precision that you have to have, whether you're like setting the car up and you're measuring or if you're on the track and, you know, being repetitious with everything that you do over and over, it's like a regimen. And it's the same thing when you're, you know, you're operating or you're deciding what to do with people's eyes. So, yeah. um, some like good parallels between it. I think one thing helps the other, uh, kind of, kind of yeah. often. Develops a consistency at, at doing one thing the same way each way and doing it good. Over and over. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I think like that. And doctors like you, my wife had cataract surgery about a month and a half ago. And, uh, <laughs> it, uh, you know, cataracts are bad enough, but it made a huge improvement in her vision that we never thought possible because she's already blind in one eye uh, yeah. from a child from a childhood surgery. So mm -hmm. the cataract in the other eye was just the preventative medicine and it turned out a lot better than we thought because after the surgery, she wears glasses now, but she was three weeks without wearing glasses and having a blast. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, cataracts, it's like a 10, 15 minute, you know, procedure yeah. that completely changed somebody's life. So there, there's like, oh, yeah. I think in medicine that take that short of amount of time to make that big of a difference. So, um, yeah. I've, I've got a book yeah. that, um, well, good for you. That's good. Yeah. I've got a book that, uh, actually I've been copying one of the pages that showed, uh, several years ago, this book was printed way back several years ago. It, the, the surgery is the same, but, uh, the, the surgical incision was about a half moon shape, you know, so it had four or five yeah. stitches in it. And basically it's a cryogenic probe and all that stuff. So it's basically the same stuff, but now the one stitch, no stitch stuff. And, you know, like I said, my wife was so anxious to get them done. She said, no, we're not doing both. She had one done and in the post-op drops. And then before she got done with the post-op drops, she said, doc, now it's time to do the other one. Yeah, so she's doing so she's doing drops on both eyes, you know. But yeah, uh, she's fine, you know. I can't. I made her a pair of glasses. She needs distance glasses and the bifocal in it. But she wears readers, and I, you know, what can you do? They don't listen to me. You know, my daughter's the same way with her contacts. That you need some glasses. You know? Right, and, right. And um, um, so you know, they listen to the doctor. Don't listen to me. I've been doing this for all these years. And, 
I know a little bit about it. I'm not surgically educated, but uh, I'm a uh, Yeah, manufacturing. you've seen it. You're in the after. Yeah. yeah, I'm a manufacturing optician, so I got trained in the Army, but uh, if you will. But, uh, yeah. Now, I learned enough right. about it to go, you know, you need this. No, I don't. Okay, fine. Now, you notice most of us are all wearing glasses. Yeah. So you got all these things that have been popping out. You got the Lasix and all this other stuff. You being in the know, when somebody's going out there trying to get corrective vision and being able to get rid of these things, mm -hmm. what are what is something good to consider? Um, I mean, it depends on, on a lot of things. And I think it's uh, uh, the main factor is probably the age of the patient. So, you know, really young people who absolutely don't want to wear contacts, don't want to wear glasses. We take measurements to make sure the eyes are, are healthy and they're, they're good candidates for thick. Um, I think it's great. Ooh. Oh, you guys still there? Yeah, we're still here. Just, okay. just listening to you. Because yeah, uh, I know that uh, myself, I've several times thought about you know going and getting the LASIK surgery because I wear contacts, but then I also know that once if if and when I do do it, I'm still going to have to wear readers. Right. Because yeah. as it yeah. is, as it is, in fact, what you see me. What I had on is nothing more than readers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm sitting here yeah. close enough to the screen. I, don't, I can use them or not use them. Yeah. But then when somebody turns around on my phone and tries to send me a message, then I got to say over here, go, okay, look, <laughs> yeah. who the hell is <laughs> that? Oh, yeah, wow. so it all, it all sort of depends. And then, you know, the older you get, if you do have cataracts in which, you know, they, they're visually significant, which you can see that, you know, when you go see your eye doctor, they can look at you with the slit lamp. At that point, it kind of makes more sense to just go ahead and, and do the cataract surgery if it's the right time for that. Because now they yes. make lenses that will help you see far, will help you see close. They even have you know multifocal lenses that, that are getting better that help you see far away and up close without glasses. Yeah. So at that point, it, it would make more sense to just go ahead and do that instead of having LASIK and then a couple years later getting, getting cataracts. So it all, it all sort of depends on the person. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife had uh, a doctor next door to us, a two-door state down in Florida. That uh, the doctor recommended she go through and she had the cataract surgery, like I mentioned. And, and the doctor mm -hmm. came back and said, I got reference back from the uh, you know, the specialist, and uh, they said she didn't get, didn't get her cataract. Flick. I said, Yes, she did. We just didn't pay the five thousand uh, dollar, yeah, high end cataract multifocal deal. You know, she wears her readers, and you know, we got what was covered, basically, right. You know? <laughs> Oh, that's wow. a great, that's like the tried and true. I'd say, you know, most cataract surgeries I do, you pick like a, a monofocal and then you just wear, you know, the glasses as readers, or if you do it the other way, you wear them for distance and, and lots of people are happy with that. So, yeah. Well, here, this ought to make you go crazy now. I wear contacts sometimes a year and a half at a time. No, oh. no, you don't. Yes, do I do. I, 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 wear, I wear them. And I, and they'll be great. No you, problems. You, no, I, wait, but you sleep in them. You take them out and clean no, them and everything, right? No, no. They stay in no. there. Oh, God. Uh, Patrick, really he just made it. He just made it. <laughs> Patrick, you're an MD. Talk Please to this don't man. Talk to that. <laughs> Talk to this man. Like I said, people don't listen to me. Don't do that. that. Patrick, you're an you're MD have to now. We're going to tie him up and bring him down to you and let you fix we him need up. To. And I, I see so many train wrecks all the time, you know, bad, bad infections in the eye from people who sleep in them, you know, just for like one or two nights. I'm amazed that you've done what you say you've done and never never had a problem with your eyes. But if, if, God, I, will tell you, I will tell you this, if I feel any irritation at all, they're out. <laughs> and I keep and I keep them out for two weeks. If you feel like, if you feel like it's bedtime, take them out. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who says I sleep? Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> but get MD that. on here because they don't listen to me. Uh, you know. It's yeah. Not. Here's your official recommendation: Don't sleep with them in, please. Uh, exactly. There you go. Well, I I I Free. basically have been rather lucky that. Uh, Unpaid visit. <laughs> what's that? Oh, somebody <laughs> sent me another <laughs> message. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so, I hear you, Dave. So, yeah, no, I was that was me replying back to you. Thanks for oh, that. Okay. Um, but uh, so yeah, it's you, usually you, when I took and had I had uh, Bell's palsy a few years back. Still mm -hmm. have a little bit left over. Now I couldn't use I couldn't even put contacts in for over a year. Yeah. And then 
when I did go put them back in, I couldn't keep them in for a long period of time. I'd keep them in for a couple of days and then pull them out, a couple of days, pull them out. And mm. Be quiet back over here, Dwayne. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So anyway, um, I I actually talked with one of my original doctors that I used to go to all the time before he retired, and apparently my eyes are so I don't I don't remember the term he used, but basically they are very uh, liking the material that AccuView two uses. I, if I use other brand, if I use other types of brands, it'll start uh -oh. bothering me after a, a couple of days. And so every they don't time make I, those contacts anymore. We sell them. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know where to get them though. <laughs> uh, I got a I got a, a, a web eye care, I think is the name of the place I get them from. A second hand shop. <laughs> yeah. Me to move up to the next level of contact for that particular brand. But I, that's that's head. also why I've been thinking about going ahead and doing the some sort of surgery mm -hmm. on the eyes, and then I don't have to wear contacts. I don't have yeah, to worry yeah. about listening to the the MD guy going, "Oh no, you're not doing that." Yeah, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Just for you, when I go home tonight, I'll try to remember to take them out. Thank cool. you. I I'll, I'll sleep better tonight knowing that you're doing that, okay? Okay. Yeah. I'll nag you yeah. before, before we Then he finally follows somebody's advice. <laughs> yeah. Hold it. That breaks my trend. I can't do that. Sorry. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> I'll remind him before we break company tonight because we'll be going out a little bit later after the show's over. And, uh, we just all send him a text. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We, 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 we'll go we all go out. We all go out to eat to, to the studio. We just won't do it as long as you and I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so what's up next on your racing schedule? Um, end of this month, I think June 26th, we're racing over in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, it's oh, called good. Fort Speedway now. It used to be Ponte Gorda Speedway, um, another track that's been down here for forever. Uh, it's kind of kind of our home track now. It's the closest one to us, uh, you know, being down in Miami. Um, it's a good track for us. We've been close on a win there this year a few times, and had some stuff go wrong. We got wrecked in one race while we were leading with like under under ten to go. So that's not uh -oh. perfect. Yeah, you know it, it happens. So yep. uh, we're going to back together and then gonna go over there and give them hell. So hey. now, what, 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 what level? Down. What are you racing? Uh, super late models. Super late models. Yeah. Have a lot of tracks closed down the last couple of years in Florida. Um, it's been it's been a while actually. We got like four tracks right now that are pretty active but um you know DeSoto Speedway closed a while ago and now you know a guy who's popular on YouTube owns it makes videos there but there's no oval track race going on uh Orlando is still like functioning they rent that one out but no one races there um you know we lost uh Lakeland Speedway a, a while ago which is yeah. an awesome track it's on iRacing now so everybody can play it but I, I love racing there in person that was one of my favorites in, in Florida so I think um I think that it's all kind of equal out though, where the number of cars and, and number of fans, you know, it's it's right for the amount of tracks that we have in Florida. Obviously, I'd like to have twenty more, but um, you know, the, the fields are good and the stands are, are pretty packed because the tracks are far enough apart now that um, you know, each one fills up pretty nice. So, what uh, what kind of stable cars do you have? How many do you have in your garage? Uh, what? Well, we have a we have one car. <laughs> so I drive for for Jim McCoy. Um, he basically, you know, when I was growing up, him and my dad raced against each other at, at Hialeah Speedway in the street stock. So I've known him since I was a kid and he raced for a while and then, you know, retired and had a couple of really great race car drivers, uh, drive for him, Bobby Coyle, Joe Winchell, people were, you know, very big in, in Florida when I was growing up. And then, um, I started driving for him about three or four years ago now. And he has, a uh, coming up on 15 year old Hampty car that we keep plugging <laughs> away at that, that still Still does well. Uh, Robert, uh, you know, rest in peace. He built great cars. And, uh, you know, this one, we, we all kind of put a lot of effort into it. I always like, I, I have a left-hander. I don't get to race it much anymore. But I like working on the car a lot. Jimmy works on it, you know, uh, majority of the time. Um, Tim Smale, who also helps us out on the pit crew. Everyone is really passionate about about racing. And, you know, even though we don't have a new, fancy, lightweight car like some of these other guys do, we, we keep it up to date pretty good, and it's competitive. So, 
Um, all effort goes into into that car. <laughs> yeah, that's what counts. So, like you said, Patrick, it's a, it's a ship competitor. Patrick, yep. these are your tools, dude, just like me. So, got to take care of them hands, man. I'm getting all right in mind now. Well, you know, here, so. That was my first wonder when you said eye doctor and doctor about racing, too. I thought, well, let's see what's busiest the most. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you got to do what you love. And you're doing, you're probably one of the more fortunate ones. You're doing two things that you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. You're working your medical with your ophthalmology, and you're also able to race as well, too. And not a lot of people have that ability. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know I'm super fortunate, and, and for a long time, I thought at some point, it would, it would have to be one or the other. And um, I think if I was racing my own stuff right now, I, I wouldn't be, you know. So I, I'm thankful to, to Jimmy and, and you know their, his whole crew. That kind of keeps me in the seat. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to race it much. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lucky dude. It's been a lot of fun. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. You're still thinking about that, aren't you, Roger? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying not to say his, nothing. Uh, his I, eyes are right now. <laughs> no, nah, my eyes are fine. <laughs> I can even see Dwayne over across the hall, off across the way. <laughs> Did you say that was old Roger Hefke car you got? Yeah, Robert Hefke car, yep. We helped us in Bristol on a Pro Cup car years ago. We got to finish about seventh or eighth in that race, I believe. Well, who did Pro oh, Cup Oh, really? Car? Nice. Yeah, we had never been to Bristol before. He, he helped us out with it. Darren Odo knew him. We got it on the car. And, uh, he helped mm-hmm. us out with it. We, we did good with the car once we got it going. <laughs> One of the things I was, I actually had to put my glasses on since, since I had to read. Uh, and, Andre sent a message that uh, apparently uh, Timothy Peters and uh, was it PK Ware or I think that's what the name of the team is? They decided yeah. to split ways. Yeah, truck, truck, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, truck team. Andre sent me that. Message. And uh, who did you say? Josh Barry's supposed to jump in there. Yeah, in yeah, there. yeah. Reevaluate it. Um, yeah. The Enfinger was going to drive the vehicle after he decided to step out of it. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to find out more about that this weekend because Timothy's going to be out here running the cars tour. Yeah. Him and Bobby McCarty both, and Bobby's uh, already, he's in first place, and uh, Timothy's already run one race. That's I think that's all he has run. Well, last week in Charlotte, uh, Brian Godovic, who actually started Langley, if I'm not mistaken, and yep. he went sports car racing with driving Lamborghinis and stuff, and he was running yep. at, at the Xfinity race at Charlotte last week, and he practiced some, and he got out of the car. I said, guys, it's been six years since I've run an oval track this big and this fast. I think you need to get somebody else in this car right now. I am too rusty. Which they is put uh, in finger in it. Is yeah, they put gra- they put Grant Enfinger in there. Yeah. Enfinger yeah, in the truck. So yeah, but he he wrecked it early on though, didn't he? Yeah, he wrecked it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to see that part. <laughs> that, 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 that would have better stay in the car. <laughs> well, whose fault it was. I, I don't remember whose fault it was as the accident. But I know what happened on happened to him early on, which is really sad to see. He got caught like up in somebody else's crap. Yeah. That's what he got caught up in somebody else's crap. So what happened? Yeah. But, but you did see who finished tenth. With. Yep, Jeremy. Jeremy. Clinton. Jeremy. He would be tenth. Nice. Jer- Jeremy's a uh, just like you, an old friend, and uh, mm-hmm. he, he, he and I do some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last week he was doing a tour of the shop. He was going across all the cars. Oh, there's another LTR sticker. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next time we get him on, he's going to show us the engine shop. I mean, he shows the difference between the brakes disc, the thickness of the brake disc for a road course car, and then a you know a speedway. And he said if you the road course car, the thing is like three quarters of an inch thick or something like that. He said if we get done with the road course, we take those things and throw them away. I'm going, good lord. Yeah, because you'll wear them out. Yeah. Adam. Mm. I had a friend of mine one time who was going to race who was going to race Xfinity and they put <coughs> speedway parts on a road course car. No, I don't. He I, got about five laps and had to pull it off because he had nothing to stop with. Yeah. <laughs> he was pissed. Well, I read that one time where uh circle track, you know, regular oval track, the team had a, a new driver with the team and the crew chief was Used to the old driver, and so he put some, like I said, some lightweight brakes on the car instead of heavier brakes. And it turns out the the new driver they had would drag the brakes to help set the car up. 
And needless to say, he didn't last the entire race when he burned the brakes up. And then Crucio's going, what are you doing? He said, that's what I've been doing all my life. And he says, I wish you told me about that. Because I would be like, yeah, I put better brakes on. <laughs> what, what division was he running? Well, uh, I don't know. It was... Uh, it's been a number of years ago, man. I don't know. Grand National. Well, you know, that's, um, it was a break issue that took A.J. Allendinger out for the race the other day. He broke, mm -hmm. uh, broke a rotor, broke a uh, brake rotor or something in the back, and that's what, that took him out of the race. Yeah. Um, so it's no. not like you still follow everything closely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I keep up with everything. Um, you know, you never, you never know when, uh, that phone call will come. So I, I like to know. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, and it's come to a lot of guys this year. Uh, you probably noticed a lot of guys yeah. have gotten gotten seat time that they really weren't expecting, uh, which is always a good thing. And that's the good yeah. thing about you staying attuned to, to the driving as well too, because you can answer that phone call. <laughs> yeah, I can answer it and get on a plane or drive wherever the heck I need to go to get there. But um, be there at a moment's notice. It's it's, it's like a song. Just call my name and I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Well, Josh. What did you say? Like, like Sammy was saying, Josh Berry, uh, been driving for JR, took advantage of that opportunity yeah. to do your motorsports. It looked like he's going to get a full time ride next year because he's been doing really well. So it's nice to see a guy uh, gr uh, graduate, even though he's in his later 30s now. But, you know, like nowadays it's like you're 20 years old or you're too old or something. I don't know. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Every, every time he's been in, you know, one of those cars in the Xfinity series, he's, you know, done very very well for himself and i think that's finally catching everyone's attention so yeah it's cool to see out have you have you thought about possibly driving or racing in the cars tour series oh yeah yeah i'd love to um you know it's it's tough between you know my work schedule and then also you know jimmy's pretty busy with his job too it's hard especially being all the way in south florida to get get up there and run those races but um you know we both like a lot of the tracks in North Carolina, we haven't raced at a ton of them, but we've we've been up, you know, Hickory before and, and stuff like that. So I, I would like to run some some cars tour races if it ever works out. Well, if you ever get into it, and get up to, all the way up to Langley. Get up to Langley. Oh, you've been telling me that for years. I'd love to race Langley. That's that's a cool little track you guys got yeah. there. So mm -hmm. someday we'll make that. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. I, I I thank God I don't hold my breath about it, but I'll be waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Don't well, leave your contacts. That's what it is. I'm gonna leave my contacts in until you get up here. How's that? <laughs> Maybe you have to do eyeball replacement surgery or something. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna do that at the same time. We'll run the picture and then we'll do the surgery. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> your well, you have a so tough schedule right now with your residency coming up. That's gonna keep you pretty busy locally, there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it, it stays pretty busy, um, but, you know, I've been juggling both of these things for, for a while now, so it, even when we can't make it to a practice the day beforehand or something, you know, we're able to still get there on the day of the race. It's always practice qualifying, stuff like that, so um, it's it's a juggling act, but, like, the team I'm driving for, they're, they're used to it now, and I've actually had some friends of mine, you know, that I've grown up racing with who, who still race, and they uh, happily shake down the car for me when I can't get there. Oh, the day before. So, yeah. it's a... Full team effort. We make it happen. That's good. Yeah. Well, the people you trust too. So you know when they're behind the wheel in the car and they tell you something, you know how to you know how to adjust to it. Maybe you trust what they have said on the setup of the car too. That's good. Well, and yeah. same too about how you've been finishing too. I mean, uh, being able to run up front, as much as you talked about doing, uh, has a lot to say with how the setup is done. So, mm -hmm. so the car is ready when you get there. Yeah, Matthew, exactly. How far north have you been? You said you've been in Carolina. Is that the farthest north you've been since you're way down in, way down in South Florida? Down there? Oops, sorry, it was cutting out. I and, couldn't hear you. You've been, uh, how far have you north have you been? You've been over to Alabama, been up North Carolina. You sound like you hadn't been all the way to Virginia yet. He, he's raced up at uh, Richmond International. Richmond? In Richmond? Yeah, in Bristol, um, Dover. Uh, not not too many of the short tracks, you know, out, outside of Florida, but um, run Hickory, Cordell, some places in Georgia. Haven't made it to Virginia though. Need to get up there. Oh, good. No, you good. did run in Richmond, remember? Yep. It was not a good race. You ran in Richmond though. <laughs> that poor little oh, that pink and black that. car got all messed up. <laughs> we were running good until that happened. We got put three wide coming off of two in the middle, wow. and uh, looking not back. Good. At the Hey, there still was plenty of room uh, outside of me to the wall, but the, you know, whoever was out there got a little nervous and, and hooked left, and then uh, we got right reared into the wall. But I think we were running 
you know, 10th or 12th or something at that point. That was just the start of the race too. So, uh, got, got to get back to Richmond at some point and, and make up for that. Yep. That'd be good. I'm going yeah. to keep wearing my contacts till you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anywho, um, let's see. Now, how's, how's your, uh, I think you said you had, uh, uh, I can't remember. We talk so freaking much. Um, there they go again. <laughs> Roger's phone and barks at him. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's people also trying to send me messages on Facebook during the live thing, too. Um, you had some uh, tolerance on some oh, stuff. Um, Guten. Has, has that come? Did you have some Guten issues? So, oh, gluten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, uh, I have celiac disease, so I can't eat anything with gluten in it, which is. A huge pain in the butt because I, I love gluten. I love anything fried and cakes and all that stuff. But that's been about um, 12 years now when I got diagnosed with that. And I think even compared to the last time we went out and ate together, it, it's easy to find something you know gluten-free or gluten-free menu at every restaurant and go to oh, nowadays. Yeah. yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah. I got to do some work um, for the uh, Beyond Celiac organization a few years ago, went around and talked about, you know, getting diagnosed and getting adjusted to the diet. I think like the biggest thing is when, you know, when I was diagnosed, I was in college at the time and that's when, you know, you're up at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> eating pizza and ramen noodles. And, and that's like part of the culture of, uh, you know, growing up and, and hanging out with people. So a little bit of that is an adjustment, but like I said, nowadays it's gotten so much better. You can pretty much find options anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. I, I remember we talked about that. And, of course, eating steak, that wasn't the hard part. <laughs> it wasn't a problem. Yeah, my favorite meal is still steak, steak potato, veggies. So I, I never had to do that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. And Jer Jeremy and I are always joking. He's, he's waiting to try to eat one of the steaks that I cook when I make uh, my steak dinners and stuff. So. <laughs> he's whenever he gets up here he'll get one we, we were talking about that well uh, also uh probably going to richmond for the xfinity race for there nice so that'll be fun yeah langley always does not race the weekend that the, that the uh, series is up in richmond right. so. so i get a weekend off from spotting <laughs> <laughs> But lately, I, I still haven't heard. Gonna have a lot of weekends off the way it sounds. I know. I don't. I still haven't heard. I, I don't know if they're going to try to do that other seventy-one car and make it more safe and put Paul back into that or not. Yeah. <sighs> yeah I used to have that picture. That was, of course, any wreck's an ugly wreck anyway. But. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to text you the the pictures from the the wreck in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see that. Uh, Never a pretty sight to see a wreck race car around there. Yeah. Well, of course, the outside doesn't quite show the damage until you dig down inside and see how it went. But yeah. the, the one looking at the front end can be that way. Yeah. I was trying to chase you down on uh, Google and Facebook here, Patrick, to see a little more a little more about you there. But you don't, uh, I guess you haven't had a chance to do a whole lot of uh, social media. Uh, not, not too much, but I get on there still. Yeah. I, I got the uh, Facebook and my, my Twitter and Instagram. It's, uh, at ninety seven Patrick Star. That's yeah, my, my yeah. Yeah. The only reason I knew about the win was he has me on his list for when he sends out public notices or racing notices. Yep. Kept you on the list there there. <laughs> That's one good thing, I tell you. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it's like un unfortunately, um too many times people that I've met and gotten to know and don't always get to see every couple of months or only get a chance to see them once or twice a year at a race and then mm. something happens to them and you don't never find out about it yeah i had uh one of my crew chiefs he passed away back a couple of months ago and he used to be one of the officials at the track and mm. never heard nothing about it from anybody then uh i told you on the show one day <laughs> then uh uh eric mcclure another friend of mine ran the xfinity yeah. races he had, he had passed away, and I was just totally, r really, you know? And uh, and that probably is just like you having to study and do all your stuff. You don't get to stay on all the time with all the social media stuff. That's the way it is here. 
I don't get a chance to be on there as much as I used to be. So I don't, I don't have that chance to keep up with everybody. Yeah. So. Yeah, because uh, work, they've worked me kind of crazy lately, too. Yeah. Got yeah. I had a guy that referred to me many years ago because I was doing writing and putting posts on, on a website called Bleacher Report, which is totally changed concept now. But And he was texting me, you know, and we we're going back and forth. He wanted to get some advice on how to do some writing, which is, which is very kind, uh, you know, very flattering. And then, um, Something popped up on his face. Apparently, he left some somebody knew his um, password, and he said he passed away. And he was a pretty young guy. And I'm going, geez, Louise, you know, uh, he had just contacted me the week before. Said, you know, I'm gonna send you a story, and can you tell me if it's any good or not? I said, sure. And uh, the next few months later, I got a some kind of a. a Facebook thing from that his Facebook page trying to contact me. I said, "All right, somebody's hacked into his page, but I know he's passed, and uh, you can do those things they call archive or something like that." And they apparently didn't know how to do that, and so I did a block on that on his page because I knew he was, he was gone and he was the only fellow. And um, so you know, it's, it's you well, know, how old was he? Huh? How old was he? He's probably 52, 53, something like that. My father died when he was 50 years old, so, you know, it's not unheard of. For you, anything below 70 is young. Yeah, well, I know <laughs> that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you know, get to be the young man tonight. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Fill that seat. <laughs> yeah. So normally I am, so you get to have it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's younger than my two children, so what the heck? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's you know my my father was at Martinsville uh, when he had his heart attack and died. So it was just Sunday morning mm -hmm. race back in the fall of '72. So um, if I had to fly home from Denver, I'm leaving. But um, so my doctor's hey supposed, my doctor's, you being an MD, you understand my doctor always busted me. You have got a bad family background, bad family history. I I know. <laughs> Gotta behave yourself. So something tells me Patrick's got a power issue with his phone. <laughs> uh, there, there he is. He's yeah. back. Yeah. I think my my battery's flashing and I'm about to die over here. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We see, we see that a lot of times. People they don't think about it. It's at nighttime when you got the least amount of energy left, and we'll right. see him. We got the video go. Now. Your video goes <laughs> away. Your name pops up. I said, oh, he's running low on battery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, well, I tell you what, I enjoyed getting a chance to be able to talk with you again. I'll send a couple of those pictures over from Paul's car, yeah. and I promise to. <laughs> cross his fingers. <laughs> fingers crossed. I think you're supposed to uncross. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. So how many of these are crossed here? <laughs> I'm going to call you tonight. Do it. <laughs> yeah. See if he didn't cross his toes or something. Uh, not yeah. these shoes. Oh. They're for tennis. I can't oh. cross anything. Yeah. He knows. What was that, Patrick? Oh, we don't have video proof. He's probably crossing his toes right now. <laughs> he has literally had tennis shoes on. Uh, tennis. Well, we're, we're I play a lot of tennis, show. so I have actual yeah. tennis tennis shoes on. Yeah. And you can't really do too many crossing to your toes inside of them suckers. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Can't. That's all right. <laughs> well, I found, I found your Instagram page, so I'll try to keep up with you on that part of it. All right, um, cool. You, you follow back. Yeah, I may get down to Miami once in a blue moon for work. Uh, I'll try to look you up next time I get down that way. No, with COVID, there's no telling what our travel going to do. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck with racing, man. That's exciting that you've got two great passions going, and you're able to take care of both of them. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a have a, give me my number and then hit, hit me up when you're down here. We'll go find a go kart track or something. I'll do that. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> get a slick go kart uh, track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're more fun. How, how yeah, Doral like, is the area. How Doral is like, the area where we're usually at. Doral. Okay, yeah, it's right near here. It's 10 minutes away. Yeah, the, the, the headquarters where we work at right across the street from uh, uh, Trump's golf course where they used to hold uh, some of the, the uh, championship race uh, about golfing. But, uh, of course, they shut that down here a while back, too. But I love Miami. Yeah. Miami's a good trip. Mm -hmm. It's fun. <laughs> now, how's COVID affected you with, all the, with everything? 
Uh, you know, it was it was bad for a while down here. Um, the hospitals really got super overloaded, and you know, fortunately, doing what I do, we didn't have to uh, you know work on the medicine wards. We got closed. They started, you know, a lot of people got sick, and they were gonna maybe pull us over to the to the main hospital. And fortunately, that didn't happen. We we took care of our own patients who had it, obviously, but it affects the eyes, you know, much less frequently. And and they went to the main hospital for anything serious, but. Um, you know, it was weird. We were all under, you know, quarantine here, just like other parts of the country and the roads were quiet. It was an easy drive to work, I guess was the, the only positive part about it. But, um, yeah. it was, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of a tough time for everyone. And it's nice that we're, we're on the other side of it now and things are getting better. So I don't know how it's going there, but it, you know, Florida is starting to feel a little bit normal again. I, I worked for Walmart and, they, and I was working two different stores at the time and they gave me what I call a hall pass. And it had the Walmart heading on it and it had the store and said, this person is an essential worker in case you get stopped by the police in some place. <laughs> and uh, they can show the badge. I've got it in my pocket because I came straight from work. And if you have any other questions, call this phone number, which I think Walmart in Bentonville has got its own area code. <laughs> 469 <laughs> something. Seriously. And, um, you know, we will, we will advise you that this person does work for Walmart. So I actually got two what I call hall passes, and they were dated March 22nd of last year. So people were, well, thought I was nice. joking, and I said, you know, uh, we've been uh, one year on 90 days to wear the mask and flatten the curve. But they had us, they had us shut down in optical for a while, uh, and then we were cleaning. I did, we did more cleaning in my optical department than we did when I was going to get the prep for my knee surgery. <laughs> you know, they, they, you know, I asked the guy, I said. The chairs are cloth. We can't have cloth chairs and the signature pad, you know, when you sign for stuff. <clears throat> he said, oh, we wipe that down every night. Okay. I, 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 you know, I left it alone. I didn't get into it. It's not, not my position. Leave it alone, yeah. Not yeah. my position <laughs> to get into that stuff, you know. So. There, there it goes. He's gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. all right. Hey, <laughs> hey, refresh my memory. He's been on the show before, hadn't you, Roger? Yeah. Call in, yes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I thought I remembered him talking about the medical uh, part of it and racing. That's when, when he started talking about that, I remembered. Yeah, that was back when he was just getting into doing all that stuff. And Man, was, how about yeah. Daniels getting another win? Yep, 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 yep. I'm going to start piling up now. Kyle Larson starts winning. I, I bet they'll win eight races this year. I, t I took and told, I told Cliff, I said, I smell a championship coming on. Is Dan Man. Daniels his, his crew chief on the five? Yeah, you can yep. hear him. Jimmy Johnson last year had Johnson running up front every race. Yep. You know, so he's he's, he's got his shit together, man. Well, he's he got, got to win some eight races. He's been really running well lately. You know, all the whole Hendrick and I've got a guy that's a casual Facebook friend, and he's obviously a Chevrolet guy. So last couple of weeks he's been busting my chops sending me instant messages. And uh, I bought me a new Ford flag to hang out in front of my house, but it's still in the house. Keep it there. Oh. Yeah, well, it's not, the way things are going, it's not going to get wet anytime soon. Uh, yeah. Virginia flag up instead. So. Um, um, did you hear about Tim Allensworth down at uh, Carteret County Speedway? Carteret. Carteret? Carteret, yeah, that's it. I think Mark Wirtz is supposed to race a truck there or something. Well, next week. He tried to punch out Zach Lightfoot and wound up getting suspended for a race or two. He, he dumped Zach Lightfoot? Tried to punch him out. I'm I'm reading from what Andre was sending me in the middle while we were finishing. Yeah. Up he's a young Patrick. boy too, ain't he? Huh? Zach's a young boy, ain't he? Yeah, he's a little teeny shit. Got to try to serve up a knuckle sandwich, huh? I could probably lift him with one arm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got a. I don't think he's about 15 well, or 16 years old. I, I got don't a, think he's that old. A brother-in-law. Yeah, you know, it's just like a Chihuahua. They don't know how big they are. So I want things they're a bulldog, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a, 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 a brother-in-law's retired now police officer. And he's a big old tall guy. He's, you know, he's big old. He's kind of the size of almost Andre, if you know, you know. And I asked him, I said, just out of the blue, I said, do you ever get little guys give you a hard time you get called to a situation? He goes, oh, they are the absolute worst. And like you said, they they think. Yeah. They're a Chihuahua and they think they're a Great Dane. And, you know, <laughs> he's like, they're up to here on him, you know. He's six foot three or four, big guy. And he's got up there coming to him. He said, You don't, don't want to do this, son. We can't. 
I can hurt you in a minute. You know, funny thing, if you listen to the cops, you're not going to have a problem. <laughs> exactly. If you just do what they say, you don't have a problem. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. If you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. That's the amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. figure well, that out. I tell you. You get a little guy get a, get a couple beers at him, and he thinks he's uh, King Kong or something like that. He's it's just, just, you know, that. It's an like asshole. That. that alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, 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 something about the human nature that once you feel like you're going to be arrested, you become a totally separate person. Um, like Dwayne said, my brother's a deputy sheriff for uh, a damn near 40 years in law enforcement in Georgia, and he pulled over a, an old gentleman, probably 70, late one night, weaving down that roadway, eating something wrong with him or drinking. He waited because he put a blinker on and went up to the exit, got him off on the exit, got the guy out and talked to him, and he started going through all different kinds of conversation with him, and then started calling out this uh, captain on the sheriff's department that he knew this guy, um, and just give him a call. And so after he ran him through some of the field sobriety tests uh, and the things that you're required to do uh, to uh, establish whether they've been, you know, whether you suspect they've been drinking or driving or not. After he failed each one of them, he walked up to the guy, and the guy probably wasn't 130 pounds, soaking wet. And my brother's about 6'2", the vest and all the other crap he's got on, he's a pretty sizable fellow. He got up to him, put his hands on him, and advised him that he was going to have to arrest him for uh, suspicion of DUI. He said, that guy went from being a little short, skinny guy to a damn bulldog and wanted nothing to do with being arrested. He said it took everything he can he could just spin him around and put him down in the back of his car before he could get handcuffs on him. Little tiny 130-pound guy. As soon as he found out he was going to get arrested and taken to jail, he went nuts. Well, I'll tell you what happened to me one night. I can tell you what happened to me one night. The cop had me handcuffed, and I was drunk. Actually, I went to it was after a Miami Speedway banquet. He <laughs> pulled me over at 7-Eleven. There was ice on the ground. He said, I'm not going to give you a test. He, he had me handcuffed. He said, but I said, I'll tell you what, can you call somebody to come and get you? I said, yeah. He said, give them a call. When they come, when my wife come and got my wife and Kevin Recker come and got me because Kevin drove the car home. My wife, my wife took me home. <laughs> it's about one o'clock in the morning now. The cop yeah. un unhandcuffed me. He said, I'm going to sit here and do paperwork. He said, I'm going to watch what happens. He uncuffed me and let me go home. As long as they come and got the car. <laughs> oh, you're lucky man. Yeah. But you, if, you, if you do if you do what they say and you're nice, oh, I know, I know. They, they're allowing you, know, you right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, you know, it's just sad that how many how many situations could be avoided if it was. And you don't have to do the yes or no, sir. Nothing says you got to call him, sir. But you just do the common sense thing and the healing thing. You you treat like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. But that's tough. That's tough in some situations for some people. Yeah, uh, I was drinking. Same thing it's the same thing as a racetrack. An official come to you to do something, and you've got something going on, and they tell you that, and right away they start getting mad at the official. Don't like the rules. The rules aren't right. Something's wrong. Something sucks. The next thing you know, you've got a big argument going on, um, or somebody's funny. He thinks he's funny, uh, and never really touched him. Just like the race this weekend, yeah. Ty Gibbs. Uh, he never touched. He never touched the guy that was in front of him when the guy spun. But the first thing he did when he pulls his helmet off is he apologizes to the guy. I don't think I hit him, but uh, you know how many? How would how would racing be if they all thought like that? Yeah. Not get out complaining about something. He he apologizing for something he had nothing to do with. Clear on the video, he never touched him. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. Evidently, he thought he did though. If he wouldn't apologize. <laughs> well, it was just the air off of the front right of the well, car. That's all right. The car is so aero dependent. Now you can get close to a guy and mess him up. You know how many times the guys have done that? You know, get up on their back bumper, back. You know, they've changed the car packages so many times now. But get up on their back bumper, or like say, lean on their on their right rear, and not even touch them, but would just disturb the air. Because I was looking at that Xfinity race, and they had the cars going down the track, and NASCAR's done a lot of work to do this. But those cars are still cramming down the track. Yeah. You know, the back end is they're cramming down because they were showing it straight down the track. I said, you know, they're cramming down the track. And you know, NASCAR does some work to keep the guys from hanging it back in. Now, they look like they're going on a dirt track because they stick that right rear corner out and get air pushing yeah. on it and get around the track, you know. It's funny to hear you say that because I thought the same thing. I thought, no, 
that car is not going straight. No, nope. I mean he would have he would have a straightaway. Yep. <laughs> you can see the rear end. You can see the rear end kick had been kicked yep. out just a little bit. They showed a couple of them going out. A couple, couple three times they showed coming right straight <laughs> to the camera, and a couple cars were together. You know, one behind the other, and both of them were crabbing down the track. Yeah, I think they're probably kicked out about six inches. Yeah, they they push as much as they can. NASCAR's real trying to reel that back in, but uh, no, our yeah. cars are worse now. Our, our cars are world worse. Yeah, the Oregon cars, man, they're crabbing down. Now let's see. Remember Jacqueline Drake? Mm -hmm. She's supposed to yeah. be coming in tomorrow night. And I told her maybe possibly my, we might try to go take her out Friday. So I don't, I don't she's know. a she, she's a real powerhouse for those guys. I'm telling you, it's just to see her watching on Facebook, Instagram, and other things she does. Uh, she's really really good PR person for them. Well, she took and fractured her arm the other day. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. that. You've given away a secret, huh? She, she texted me that a little bit ago because I was talking about having her come on. And she said she was just coming back from the doctor because she had to have some stuff done. So. Ouch. Uh, not good. By the way, Bobby McCarty, Bobby McCarty is leading in the points in the Cars Tour. Cool. If you want uh, to be able to watch, if you want to watch the race, it's cars TV, cars tour TV. Yeah, it won't be on track pass. No, yep, it's a monthly subscription. I don't know what the cost is on it. You can probably go check it out. It shouldn't be that bad. But if you're there at the track, don't know who those people be. be. <laughs> I will be there. Well, I got. Of course, I get NASCAR. I get the uh, ABC Gold going, and of course, see the but you won't be able. To and the next race is rained out, and the next race is going to be on cars, so it's not going to be on it. Damn it. <laughs> well, you can see everything on the track except for the cars tour stuff. Okay. Yeah, that, that yeah, part I, you won't I, see, but you'll get to see yeah, the rest that, of the races. Yeah, that's, that's a copyrighted kind of sort of thing for their own stuff. It'd be yeah. good to have those guys here this weekend. They put on a good show. They really do. Yeah, I was trying to watch the Jenner. I'm going to get back on there and watch the rest of that Jennerstown modified race from the last weekend. I was visiting my, my my kids and uh, watched all the free race stuff and they were getting ready to fire the cars up and then everybody else came over so we kind of shut we're, that down. We won a championship race at Jefferson for the Hooters Pro Cup. Yeah, yeah one yeah. of the championship races. It was my first, first, race going, of the year, first championship race of the year. I said, "Where's Jefferson?" I said, "Pennsylvania, I think." And of course, he gets on the smartphone. Yeah, you're right. I said, "Okay." So I've you know, heard Jefferson a lot. Right. You know. I reckon I should well, I wanna... go ahead. I, I... No, I was going to ask you, Roger, something I'd actually forgot about because of how, how we started out the night. Did you get to make it and see the monster trucks? Yes, I did. I went out Friday night and was able to watch. Yep, yep. Got, I was there and brought my grandson. Got a little rain shortened. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, it did. And uh, we made it out of a good time, I'm telling you. Yeah, it was a good show, though. I appreciate uh, Terry Harris uh, did a great job putting that together. A good recovery on Sunday because it looked like the, from the pictures I saw, so... Jerry, if you're out there, good on you, buddy. It was a good show. Uh, thanks a lot for what you did. Uh, uh, seven trucks, but they still put on a good show. I had not expected the uh, ATVs and the entertainment that they provided as well, too. So, the quads, um, guys, well, yeah. <laughs> what was it? The, they're the, called the quads. Oh, the quads, okay. The uh, yeah, A good show, well run, I think is very good. Uh, and of course, the support staff he had around there from Langley and others. Is real good too, so hopefully he'll be able to get that again. Too bad the weather rolled in on I me. Mean, that would have been a great thing to done for Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and let everybody be able to go home. I'll tell you something about that show. Donnie Harris said they they all shut their shop down and sent all the employees over there to work with Terry so they could do that show. Uh, did, well, that's quite a, few, like, like quite a few moving parts to it. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. He said, take, he'd take a day off from his shop, all his shop work to bring his employees over there and let them work at the racetrack. Now, yeah. did, did the kids? It's a, big, it's a big production, man. Because I only got 10, 12 people it was. for him. It was. But now I was down over there in uh, Skybox 17 and 18 when the front wheelie went into the guy did the front wheelie oh. on that thing. The that kids amazing. were ballistic. Oh, I know. I, I, I was able to get that video and I posted it on Lane's website that night. But uh, it was a good show. He did it again on Sunday as well, too. I thought it was kind of neat that you know, the darkness and the lights and everything added to it. But, uh, 
very well set up and thought about. And there's a lot of planning got to go into that. Uh, I didn't realize that some of the conversation we had with Terry Camboisio, how expensive that stuff is, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More expensive than the late models. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. A whole lot more yeah. horsepower, too. Yeah. Anything that has to do with race cars or anything like that's expensive anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We've got alcohol <laughs> Murray sure. supercharged 500 and some odd cubic inch big block. So that's a whole bunch of stuff. That's a big lump in the brief. <laughs> it's a big lump. <laughs> Char- it was fun to watch them. Charlie, yeah. Charlie Gary used to take and build and work on those suckers. Yeah, he's, Charlie Gary was a good motor builder back in his day, man. Play model motors and everything. He could build some motors. Five <laughs> motors, he could build them all. Yeah. He's the one that took care of my stuff, so that was Did all the carburetors. All the, all the Holly 2 barrels out there for all the late models. He, could do, he did a lot of stuff, man. But, uh, anywho, so I didn't know if any of you guys are going to be free tomorrow night or not. Take and see if we can get something together and go take her out. What, tomorrow night? Where to? Where you want oh, to go? Oh, that means, excuse me. Well, let's see. She's Friday getting night. she's getting in Thursday night, so uh, I would probably say probably something Friday night. I think. Yeah. Let's see. What, have to see what her capability is or what her availability is. I should say. Yeah. I'll, I'll be getting. I'll, I'll stay in contact with her. Let's see what Andre's throwing out now. Oh, Andre's bringing um, out the new car next race, guys. Oh, no, good. Is that, the one, is that the one Chip was driving? Yeah, the 72 car. Yeah, he, I talked with him the last uh, late model race, and it was just the car was not doing what, what they wanted it to do. And it, they just figured yeah. it was too old, so they're gonna, they are gonna went ahead and got the other one all back together and ready to race. So. Yeah, he was sent me some pictures um, of the guy putting the, uh, the – well, it's not really a wrap. It's just a side striping and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is, um, yep. Can you see it, Sammy? Yep. Huh? There you go. Got the new, new look. So now what? That that's not the one that Chip drove the first of the season. The top one is the one he drove. Okay. The bottom one is the new one. Yeah. And if you can't see it that good, I'll get it when we're close at the. Yeah. At the oh. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll you'll tell a difference if you remember what that car looks like. The is other that a, is like. that a brand new car or is it? Uh, one that they had last year. Well, Andre, is it a brand new no. car? I know you're listening. <laughs> he can be texting me back here in a minute. Either me or I'm going to go to the thing here and get it. The, um, something else that was on Facebook a couple weeks ago, I don't know if you happen to see the post, but um, uh, Matt Waltz uh, brought his car out of the uh, mothballs He's and has been working on that. He, he's going to race it in the car stores this weekend, too. Yeah, that's what I heard. They said they yeah. got about 20 cars signed up for that already. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I'm sure they're full field. Um, well, I mean, you need four more full field. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. 20 cars on, on Landing Speedway is busy. 24 yeah. is even busier. Um, uh, it should be a good race, though. It'll be a good night. I haven't seen the schedule of events, but I'm sure it'll be a good night of racing. Isn't any local guys going to try and run their car in that, is it? Pardon me? You haven't heard of any local guys want, or that are going to run that car in that their car in that, have you? Matt Waltz is the only one, yeah. even though he's not he's local, um, but he's not a, hasn't been a regular racer. I, I don't know if anybody one. else is going to bring one out though. Yeah, I don't know if a Butterbean or one of them guys might be bringing one out and trying to run one. I think, yeah. I think uh, what's his name, number ninety one. Um, oh, both of the Car- both of the Carols will be out there. Yeah, they'll probably be out there. That they, they ran a six star one in that series the first of two. The first half two years ago, didn't they? And then come back to the yeah. yeah. It's going to be the Cars Tour, Grand Stock, Super Trucks, and New Cars for this weekend. They're going, there are going to be many Grand Stocks out there all over crashing. Yeah, <laughs> well, Tim Tim Wilson withdrew. He took his car home, I heard. Yeah, he said it wasn't running. He Qualified did, he said, outside pole and took it home. Yeah, he said it did not feel like it was something was wrong with the car. He said, I don't feel like it's going to be safe. So. Well, man, yeah. start market, so at least get a chat. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you, you, you don't get a check if you load your shit up and take it home. <laughs> yeah. Volunteer to start in the back row. Yeah, start in the back. Start in the back. Make one lap. Park it and go home. Yeah. Yeah. Get the, get, was, that, uh, get that uh, eighty double, bucks. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's something you bought two times that night. You need to get some of that money back. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Dave? 
No, I, I was just going to say it, it, it's sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry, but uh, it just yeah. I had no idea what was wrong with it. That, I think that occurred before I even, even that decision was made before I even got there. I'm usually I don't usually get to the track till about four o'clock, get the time of the driver meeting. Um, that way I can hear what's going on at night, but I can still help out with qualifying too. <clears throat> Good show. Looking forward to it. Yeah. But you know, with the number of regulars that are in there, it's going to be hard for someone local just to drop in with that group and be really competitive. Except for you got guys that know language Speedway. They've raced it well. They've got a good car. It's just some of those guys that, you know, Josh Berry is going to bring something. Um, um, and Roger, you mentioned the other guy's names. I can't pick up off the top of my head. But there's usually always the same four or five that are going to be up front in that division, uh, even though there's more than four or five that can win. So they've got a lot of good cars in that, in that uh, series. Well, I venture to say if Matt Waltz has got the motor they got, he'll be able to run with them. <laughs> yep. Matt, Matt's, yeah, Matt's pretty so. smart. <laughs> I, I don't know if he's out there. I think he could. You remember who won last you time? He around that racetrack fast. What, he won a bunch of, he won, he won like 10 races one year? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the same. That was, that's not the same setup, though, for uh, the car mm -hmm. business. No, who won I mean, last year? I, I don't remember. Yeah, but Matt, Lane Matt's pretty smart. He can figure that stuff out. He, 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 he's no dummy by race car by any means. He's, he knows oh, what's no. going on. Lane Riggs. Well, Lane Riggs, no. He's still talking about Matt, but yeah, Lane Riggs. Yeah. I didn't remember that. No. Yeah, you got Bobby McCarty. Uh, let's see, who else are we going to know? Is Mike Looney coming? Mike Looney's listed. He's run four races so far out of five. He's actually got one pole. Lane has got one pole. Bobby's got one pole. Justin Johnson, he'll be out there. Sam Yarborough. Brandon Pierce. Daniel Silvestri. Sam Butler. A mini Tyrell. <laughs> Who's got all the wins? Uh, let's see. Wins. Justin Johnson's got two. Bobby's got one. Lane's got one. Josh Berry. He's got one. He said he's coming this week. I don't know if he is or not. If he's not on that list, I would. I bet he's not. <laughs> this is this is if the point. I'm anything. right. I'm going off the driver's point so far. Yeah, oh, oh, right. point list. Yeah, because you got uh, a William Cox, <laughs> the third. Mike Looney, of course. I said he was already going to be. Uh, Josh Berry. William Cox, the third, driving for Jarrah Motorsports, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> A Trevor Ward and a Dylan Ward. Then we got Timothy. He's listed as owning each other's car. That's funny. Yeah. Bubba Pollard. Justin Carroll. Jack Wood. Matt Light. I wonder if he's any kind of Steven. Chase Dixon. Ronald Hill. Coy Beard. Craig Moore. Trevor Knowles. So they've got 37 people who have been out there and raced in that stuff. Yeah, but I mean, they're probably like 25, 26 of them, most of each track. Yeah, they have a mixed bag of trips, so they don't race all the time. Yeah, they're not all full-time runners. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of single single starters in the last 28 to 37. I agree. I, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't heard about the entire situation at Lane. Yeah, I was, I was just got that, too. I don't know what the scoop is on tires. Man, we ain't touched on it. How about Ty Gibbs winning two races in a day? Yeah. And one of the arc of racing and the fantasy race within about six or seven hours of each other. Two races. That boy's a real deal. He's got real good equipment, but, man, he's a real deal. You go out there and get the two different cars like that and win them both of them, you're, you're, you're a pretty damn good driver. I tell you. Yeah, I mean, even even though he's got the best equipment, he, he drove the hell out of them. Very good. Yeah, you know what? If you, if you, if you're not a good driver, if, you, if you're not a real good driver, it don't matter if you got the best equipment or not. If you yeah. can't drive, race, know. Don't, let, don't let, let me tell you, it, it, it doesn't hurt, does it? It don't it, hurt. It doesn't man. hurt. It don't hurt when you put the pedal on the metal that you got something to respond. Oh yeah. What I mean, but you got to know how to handle it too. You, yeah. you got to know how you got to know, know how to make that race car go around the racetrack. <laughs> exactly. How to and go fast and turn deep. left. <laughs> yep. Go fast, turn you left. You take half them drivers, put them in the car he's in. Half of them might do good, but only a few of them are going to win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. man that boy well, Roger, keep me posted. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and punch out of here because I got to uh, get downstairs. I've got uh, teaching yeah, class tomorrow early at Langley, so yeah. I'm going to roll out of here so I can get my nighttime routine taken care of. 
All right. Uh, we'll, go ahead, good. we'll go ahead and do a shutdown it, it, from here. Yep, let's say goodbye. Good, good, good one, uh, good, good, uh, Patrick was a good guest. Yeah, I, I miss being able to run into him. We, I try to hang with him whenever he's in the area. <laughs> That's why I knew all about what happened in Richmond. <laughs> yeah. Well, David Terrell has become our new Al Pierce because Al was like 801. He says, I'm leaving. And he would get up and leave. So. Uh, no, David, you're just keeping us on time, dude. Because hey, hey. you did about 8.15 or something like that. I said, I got to get out of here. I said, okay, let's wrap this up and go. 801, Al was ready to go. By 806, he was sitting down there at that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting on you. <laughs> well, that, that, when you mention food, that's a different story. But I'm at home, I'm already eating. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, have a good week. Roger, keep me in touch. We'll see what's going on with Jack once you figure it out. All right. We'll see everybody next week on Let's Talk Racing. See ya. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Oh. I got to go pee. Yeah, me next. Oh. Man.